Hello everybody, my name is Francis Walsh and this is my presentation for IDC 6601 Behavioral Aspects of Cybersecurity. My focus is Surfing Safely, a Behavioral Intervention Approach to Enhance VPN Use. Now in order to understand the motivation of this study, we have to first understand what a VPN is. A VPN, or a Virtual Private Network, is a technology that allows users to establish a secure and encrypted connection between their devices, like computers, smartphones, and tablets, and a server located in a different location on the internet. This connection is typically made through the VPN provider's network. When you connect to a VPN, uh, your internet traffic is routed through a VPN server before it reaches the internet. This process helps to hide your actual IP address and location, making it appear as though you're accessing the internet from a different location of the VPN server. As a result, the VPN provides several key benefits. Uh, privacy and anonymity. Uh, by masking your IP address and encrypting your internet traffic, a VPN helps protect your online privacy and prevents websites, advertisers, and other entities from tracking your online activities. It also allows for bypassing geo-restrictions. Since your connection appears to come from a uh, location of the VPN server, you can access websites and online services that might be blocked or restricted in your actual physical location due to regional restrictions or censorship. It also provides public Wi-Fi protection. When you're connected to a public Wi-Fi network, which can be insecure, using a VPN can add an extra layer of security, preventing potential eavesdropping and data theft. The encryption used in VPNs adds a layer of security, making it more difficult for hackers or malicious actors to intercept and view your data while it travels over the internet. And lastly, work and business purposes. VPNs are also used by businesses to allow remote workers to securely access their corporate networks and resources from outside the office. Now, <clears throat> a lot of attacks are geopolitically motivated, and this is something that VPNs can help mitigate. Uh, as an example, the Russian-Ukraine conflict started in 2022. Since then, we've seen an increased targeting of users located in Ukraine by 250% and an increase in targeting of users in NATO countries by 300%. It um, doesn't necessarily just have to be in times of conflict. It can also just be the fact of where you live and the status of your country, like, for instance, Wealthy nations can be targeted, uh, and as a, a study showed that 74% of small business owners that employ 150 to 250 employees would be willing to pay to recover their data. Um, not just businesses it can protect, though. It also can protect everyday users from personal data breaches. 64% uh, of Americans have an online account involving health, financial, or other sensitive data, which could easily be used to generate identity theft. The purpose of the study is to determine why people do not use VPNs, uh, to understand the type of attacks that can exploit network connection vulnerabilities, uh, to understand how users could mitigate their vulnerability by using VPNs, which demographic is most susceptible to characteristic-based connection attacks, characteristic-based being you know, your location, uh, what services you're using while you're connected, that sort of thing. And the demographic being, is it an age group? Could it also be locations? Um, we also want to develop an effective behavioral intervention strategy to increase VPN usage and subsequent effectiveness of using that. And we also want to raise awareness on network connection vulnerabilities to the general populace and the subsequent potential damage such attacks can cause. Now, what is the research gap? Well, for one, to what extent are internet users aware of VPNs, their capabilities and limitations? You know, there's a wide range of knowledge base. If you ask someone who's in their 80s who likely doesn't use the internet that often, the likelihood of them knowing what a VPN is at all is very low, whereas someone of a younger demographic and also, let's say, in the IT department would be very capable of identifying and describing what a VPN is. Another question we need, we need answered is what are common misconceptions of VPNs? You know, uh, what do people think a VPN can do that it doesn't? And what do people think VPNs can't do that it does? Uh, what are 
what do people think downsides and pluses are of VPNs that aren't actually accurate? Uh, what VPN service providers benefit the user as a whole and which should, should users avoid? We, we don't want to generate recommendations and uh, conclusions to push people in a direction to get just any VPN service because each service provider is different and some may benefit users more than others. What threats are users vulnerable to when they choose not to use a VPN? We want to make sure that we have a solid understanding of you know, exactly what can happen to people when they're accessing networks and not using VPNs. Um, how does VPN usage impact new technologies? So not just our laptops, but what about the Internet of Things? What about new devices that are frequently coming out? What about devices that don't have a, a typical interface that you can easily network them? Uh, and lastly, how can users ensure that their VPN is active? We, we want to make sure that people are aware that their VPN is active, and sometimes that's difficult to tell. Now, our primary research question uh, is, how can behavioral interventions enhance VPN adoption and its appropriate use among regular Internet users? This question directs us to explore the potential ways to influence users' behaviors and attitudes positively towards VPN adoption and effective usage. So our experimental methodology behind this study. Uh, first, we want to have want to set up the controlled experiment. So we want to have an initial survey of each participant. Uh, so questions like, how familiar are you with a virtual private network or a VPN? Uh, do you use a VPN service? And if so, what organization is the service provider and how often do you use it? Uh, how likely are you to use a VPN? And we can provide like a numerical scale. 0 to 10, let's say. And another example question would be, how often do you connect to public networks, such as a coffee shop's Wi-Fi? After that, we want to generate a group assignment. We would randomly select four groups of 50 people that we've initially surveyed, uh, ranging from recent high school graduates to people of typical retirement age. You really want to get a broad uh, uh, range of people here. So in total, since four groups of 50 people, that would be 200 people. Next, we want to expose these, each of these groups uh, to a distinct set of interventions for one week. Now, what kind of interventions are we talking about here? Well, we're going to focus on four kinds of interventions. There's the informational and educational intervention. Uh, this involves the dissemination of relevant and accurate information to users about the importance and usage of VPNs. And the aim is to enhance their understanding and awareness correct their misconceptions, and provide clear uh, instructions on VPN usage. That could be step-by-step, -step, could be webinars, informational videos, infographics, or detailed guides on how VPNs work. Um, the next intervention would be behavioral nudging interventions. Uh, it's a concept of behavioral science which involves subtly leading the choices people make by you know, altering the environment or context in which they make them. Uh, an example of this would be a simple prompt or reminder. Say they're connected to a public network. Their machine might prompt them, say, hey, you're connected to a public network. You might want to go on a VPN. Um, the third would be social influence intervention. Uh, social influence interventions leverage the power of social norms and peer influence to drive behavioral change. These could include displaying messages indicating how many users have adopted a VPN, uh, testimonials from other users who have benefited from VPNs, or creating a community where users share their positive experiences with VPNs. And the last type of intervention we'll focus on is incentive-based interventions. Uh, these kind of interventions involve providing rewards or incentives to encourage VPN use. And these incentives can either be extrinsic, like discounts or reward points or free additional services for VPN users or they could be intrinsic like achievement badges or levels for continuous VPN usage. After we've done this study for a week we'd want to measure changes and analyze the results. So we want to survey participants at the end of intervention week and then compare their survey results to the initial survey uh, to be able to determine any changes in the attitude towards VPN usage. And then using this information, we can generate recommendations to help educate the public and influence them to use VPNs more often.
and these are my references for my presentation. Thank you very much.